guys, Jnats here, and today I'll be teaching you guys the basic knots and how to read normal patterns. Today I'll be using this website called braceletbook.com, and this is the perfect site to get literally any pattern you want. I use this every time I do a bracelet, and they're always adding new patterns and new things. This is my user if you guys want to check it out. We're going to be using pattern number 22553. I'll be teaching you guys the basic knots using this pattern just because it's convenient for me at the time because I am currently making this pattern and it also has all of the knots that I want to show you guys today. When reading patterns you'll see these facts up here and what you really need to look at is the color and the string amount. As you can see there are three different colors in this pattern you can definitely see that they're red, white, and blue because it's a patriotic bracelet and what's really helpful is that it'll also tell you exactly what color corresponds with what letter and that actually helps a lot when reading a pattern or setting up a pattern. Another thing you will need to know are the string amount. The string amount is very important because if you don't cut the right amount of strings you're not going to be able to make the right pattern because if you're just one string off it can mess up the whole entire pattern. Before we get into this there are two different ways to read patterns. It really doesn't matter in this video but today I'll be using what is called the row by row method. This method is just how it sounds. You go row by row, left to right, and doing the different knots that is in each row. So you go row one, row two, row three, and row four. There's also a different type of pattern making, which is called segment knotting, and that is where you take a certain color and do all the knots consisting of that color. It's a little harder to learn, but much more efficient. But you guys don't have to worry because that'll be in a separate video. Now, getting on to the pattern. So you guys might be wondering, what are these numbers on the side here? Or what are these funny looking arrows? Well, when I was a beginner, I thought the same thing too. The numbers on the side represent the row you're on, which helps keep your place in the pattern. And the funny looking arrows you see represent what knot you're going to make. Before we get into the knots, you might have one other question. How am I supposed to make a bracelet with only four rows like in this pattern? Well, when I was a beginner as well, I did not know the answer to this. Basically, it's so simple. All you do is once you're done with the bottom row, you just go back up to the top. So you'll do this until you have your desired length of your bracelet and you want to end it. Also, before making your knot, make sure you know what two strings you're going to be using to make that knot. If you look at this first knot up here, it is a forward knot. And so you're going to be making this knot with the red and the white, or color A and color B. And you can see that the red goes on top of white because of the forward knot. Now let's say we're looking at this one right here. The two things that are poking out of the circle are white and white. So you'll be making that knot with white and white, for example. Now I'll get on to showing you guys how to make the knots. This arrow right here, which is pointing down into the right, is a forward knot. So I'm going to take these two strings, which when I look at my pattern, it shows that I have to do a forward knot on it. So a forward knot is you take your left string and you make a four. Now I'm going to zoom out so you guys can see a little bit more. You take, you're going to take this red string right here and you're going to put four. You're going to go under and you're going to pull it through. And you're going to tie tight. Each knot is actually made of two semi knots, so you're going to do this once more for a complete forward knot. So there is one forward knot. So now, after you've made this forward knot, you have transferred the red from the left side to the right side. So now I'm going to do a forward knot with the white and the red. So your white should be on the left, and your red should be on the right. So now you're going to take the left string and you're going to make half of a forward knot, which is a four. You go under and you pull it through. And then you make the other half of the knot. Once more, the next knot consists of the red and the white again. And it is another forward knot. So you take this red and you put it, put a four under and over to the, on the white knot. And then you do that once more. This arrow right here, which is basically the opposite of the forward knot, it is going down into the left, is called a backward knot. Next we have what's called a backward knot. This is the opposite of a forward knot. And basically all you have to do is you do a backwards four. 
and you're going to do this twice since each knot consists of two semi knots. And yet again, a backwards knot where you take your right string and you put it over your left string using a backward four. So it looks like this. You'll put a backwards four and then you take it and you put it under. And then you do that again to complete the knot. Those two knots will be the basis of the all the knots, since you have a forward knot, a backward knot, and a forward backward, and a backward forward knot. Now that might sound confusing, but it's really not once you get the hang of it. Now these arrows right here, which do not look like any of the other ones I just showed you, is called a backwards forward knot. So the aim of this knot is to take this string, the right string, and knot it onto the blue string so that you can see the white but then you're gonna put it back on this side. So at the end of this knot, the two strings will be in the exact same spot, but you'll have the color white on top of the blue. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a backward four. So this is part of the backward knot that we learned. So you're gonna do the half of a backward, and then you're gonna do a forward four, which is half of the forward knot. Like that. And again, here is the backwards forward knot where you take this string and you put it onto this string using a backwards four. And then you pull it through oops, tightly and then you do a forwards four. And this one right here is basically the same thing as the last one, just in reverse. So it is called a forward backwards knot. Next is a forward backward knot. This is basically the opposite of a backward forward knot. So you're going to take your white string that you have here. For this pattern, you're going to take the white string and you're going to put it onto the blue string. But yet again, these will end up in the same order they are as shown right now. So instead of doing a backward four and then a forward four, you're going to do a forward four as the first half of the knot and a backward four as the second half. So then after you're done with that, they should be in the same exact position they were when we started this knot. Yet again, here is another forward backwards knot. So you're going to take the left string, you're going to put a forwards four, so make a four, under and over, and then you tie it tight, and then you're going to do a backwards four. That is the forward backwards knot. Also, one tip that most bracelet makers use when making bracelets is to use a safety pin if you ever mess up a knot. So. If you mess up a knot like I did right here, as you can see it was meant to be red, not white, you can just take your safety pin and put it through and then pull. And then you can make your knot. 